morning class, this is going uh, good. This is going to be um, basically me explaining um, the golden ticket and also giving you some quick AP updates. There's nothing like content related here uh, per se. Um, so just stay with me. So the first thing is. Um, the AP exam is going to be on May 21st. Um, this is just a PowerPoint um, that you can find online. But more important, importantly, um, I want you to um, look at the YouTube videos that I gave you. They're in the assignment number one. Look at those YouTube videos. So it helps explain some of the information that you need to know about the AP exam. A lot better than I could. Um, so two days before the AP test, you're going to get an e-ticket to test. It's going to have like an AP ID um, and it's going to allow you to go to the exam. Don't share this with anybody. Um, this is really, really important. Um, so if you don't know your like College Board sign in information, you need to go to uh, myap.collegeboard.org and um, try to recover your password, put in an email address that you most use, try to recover your password, etc. Sorry, I'm just flipping through this fast because more of it is explained better in those YouTube videos. Uh, there will be three ways to attach um, or submit your exam. You can handwrite it and attach it uh, with photos. Make sure the photos are clear and you're attaching it in the same order. The photos, again, a coherent order. Uh, you can attach a typed response so you could put it in a Word document. Um, make sure you download it to your desktop and then upload it uh, to um, AP. Or you could put it in a Word document, then uh, control C or copy and paste uh, the response into um, the um, exam. OK, let's see what else is relevant for you here. Five steps to take before exam day. Review your content information. I can't tell you enough. If you're not reading the Princeton Review or if you're not looking at my YouTube videos and other YouTube videos, you need to be doing that starting now. Realistically, you're not going to pass the AP test if you're not doing those things. Um, you need to set time aside. Um, I, you have, I know it's very hard with distance learning, um, but we have nothing else we should be doing at this time. Uh, we should um, definitely, if you have nothing else you should be doing, I know some of us have some other commitments, but you know if you're watching Netflix or you're uh, bored out of your mind or you're getting headaches for, from sleeping in too much, then you could be doing this. I'm not saying everyone's doing that. I'm just saying um, you know if you're not putting enough effort <coughs> or as much as you could. Um, check your technology. That's just pretty obvious. Um, you could practice submitting the exams in those videos that explains how. Um, okay, what else? Um, so 30 minutes before you actually uh, the exam actually takes place, you should log in. Um, then it will start automatically. It'll tell you to start. You have 45 minutes to craft your response and then five minutes to submit your response. Um, make sure I'm going to be contacting your parents and telling them, please don't disturb them on May 21st um, because they're going to be taking a super important exam. Um, so make sure your testing environment um, is um, quiet. Exam security, you can't collaborate with other students. You can't be texting other students. Um, in fact, um, I'm going to actually be obligated to review a lot of your responses before uh, or after they've graded it, um, they're going to use anti-plagiarism software on those responses. And I've been notified that if there is plagiarism, um, colleges that you decide to apply to um, will be notified. They will be notified that you committed um, a plagiarism or um, cheated on an AP exam. And that's a huge no-no. Um, that's going to depress your chances of getting into um, very nice colleges or some of the colleges that you uh, prefer to get into, um, it's really, really going to hurt them. So don't cheat, don't collaborate. Um, you can't use shared Google documents or Google Drives. You can't uh, do stuff like that. If it's a private document you can use, you can use textbook, you can use notes, you can use um, prior um, 
document with questions. You can't copy and paste and lift the text directly, especially if it's not yours, because that's really inappropriate. But you should use all those resources. You can use the Princeton Review. You can use the golden ticket that I've crafted for you to help you. Um, that's OK. But um, otherwise, uh, anything shared? No. Um, so because um, so because there's um, you know discrepancies, uh, if you have like spotty internet access and stuff like that, and something goes wrong on test day, then there is a makeup exam that will be available. You have to submit within 48 hours a desire to take that exam, explaining why specifically you want to take that exam. Um, I will also, um, so hopefully that helps assuage some of your anxieties. Um, I will also help, um, I will also be reviewing your exam information to make sure, or like the exam that you submit, uh, that's a new uh, component this year. I will be able to look at the essay you submit and the grade that the AP graders gave and determine um, after it's gone through anti-plagiarism software and the particular protocols, whether I think um, that you've committed academic dishonesty and I'm obligated to report that. Um, so I know exactly um, if you've done that um, because I know you best, I know you're writing, I know what you're capable of. Um, what else? Um, I will also be able to file, um, you know, a complaint if I feel like um, your grade, they gave you like a four, for instance, and it should have been a five. Then I can like um, ask for, um, you know, a re-examination of your exam. So that's pretty cool um, features this year. All right. Um, so all I wanted to talk about right now is um, your assignments. So let's going to go to the assignments tab. OK, so for uh, this is all I'm going to be talking about right now. So you're going to watch these YouTube videos and then I'm going to actually add um, you a link that you should watch this YouTube video as well. Um, so for an easy summative grade, you're either going to print out the golden ticket I attached right here or rewrite highlighted sections on a separate sheet of paper. So if you don't have access to a printer, I completely understand. I don't want to make it you know, completely onerous on you. So I'm not asking you to rewrite the whole golden ticket because it's pretty lengthy. And I'm actually going to modify the assignment for you on Friday. So you have less work than somebody that was able to print out the golden ticket. So don't worry. Um, it's not punishment for not having a printer. I don't have a printer as well, so I would never do that. Um, this is going to be an easy test grade. You print it out, put your name, send, take a picture. Um, you're also going to take a picture. I want you to download the example DBQs and the Princeton Review, um, which can be found on the uh, like both sections of the Princeton Review, which can be found in the files um, uh, section of our um, of our uh, Microsoft Teams classroom. Um, I'll show you that in a bit. You're going to download it to your desktop because you can't use you know public documents like documents that are on Microsoft Teams, et cetera, but you can use private documents. So you're going to download it to your desktop so that way you will be able to access it. That's our textbook. Unfortunately, we don't have any physical textbooks that I can, we don't have physical textbooks that you have in the house. Um, we only have like the digital Princeton review. Okay. Um, and you're going to send me pictures of all of this. So send me pictures of the physical golden ticket um, on your desk, whatever, with your name on it. Um, also send me pictures of uh, or a screenshot of your desktop um, with the full folder uh, AP World History Resources and all of that downloaded into it. This is all stuff you'll be able to use on test day. Uh, so now let me just explain the golden ticket. The golden ticket is really something that is um, not exhaustive. It doesn't necessarily, it doesn't have any really um, it, like it's not comprehensive. It doesn't have a lot of content in there, um, but it does have some, um, and it has a lot of cool resources. So here are like generic ideas. Um, these are big ideas that uh, 
hopefully you'll be able to use and craft your response. Oftentimes, AP World History does deals with like the rise and decline of empires and societies, um, you know, the spread of religion um, and conflicts. Those are some of the big ideas. Your DBQ might not deal with any of those. So if it doesn't deal with any of those, then you can cross it out and just say, this is junk, I'm not gonna use it. Um, but if it does, right, if it asks you to explain why uh, the Abbasid Caliphate declined, um, then you might wanna look here, right? Um, of course, that this isn't like a copy and paste answer, right? You would have to read your documents and then from there craft your argument. But these are just some of the things that can help, you know, center and ground um, kind of our backpack ideas or um, ideas that might help you write a response. So for example, if you see um, sections about, um, you know, the rise of land-based empires um, and um, the Ottoman Empire in particular, and it asks you about how did, how were land-based empires successful when you see all these uh, documents about um, leaders that were very, um, I guess, charismatic um, then and you don't know what that word is like charismatic or you don't know or you're you're at a loss you're just like oh they seem nice they seem a uh, very powerful and you just don't know what the word is to describe it then charismatic would be your word and then you could put that in your thesis statement so those are just some generic ideas to help you out this is um, to help you address the prompt more specifically um, so if the prompt asks for like social effects or social causes of uh, political revolutions in the 18th and or 17th centuries, um, then it's really once you get it more specific, it wants you to talk about maybe like hierarchies, member, maybe inequities or inequalities, uh, gender relations, patriarchy slash matriarchy. So patriarchy would be like men rule, matriarchy, women rule. Uh, gender issues, rights of women, differences between upper and lower classes, slavery, levels of education. Those are the things that we want you to refer to. Uh, I mean, choose one, right? Read the documents and then um, choose one. And so this will help narrow your focus. Um, if it's talking about political aspects or political causes, political effects, um, or what, what changed politically over this time period, then this is where, uh, this is what it's talking about. It's talking about what what rulers were in power. Was there a bureaucracy? Was there centralized power? The military, law codes, et cetera. Um, economics um, here, et cetera. Migration and demography, I just kind of define what they meant. Um, and then technology, I just kind of gave examples. It might ask you about like technology that had a transformative impact on AP world history. Some examples of that are the printing press, uh, vaccines, the internet. Uh, this is a section that might be very helpful and might be, or actually for the most part, it's not going to be helpful at all, right? So you maybe you're given a topic on the Mongols. If you're given a topic on the Mongols, then the rest of this is going to be junk, right? Your DBQ is going to be junk. But then this itself might be junk. Um, but basically what I did for you is I um, wanted to give you a sense of what are the major topics in each unit. Um, so if you don't know what these topics are, then you should be watching YouTube videos on it, either my YouTube videos or I'm Their Sister's YouTube videos or reading the Princeton Review uh, to review these major topics. Then I attached either a date to them or a kind of description or a historical fact that would be an example of outside evidence or contextualization. Um, so outside evidence, you need two pieces of outside evidence uh, removed from the document. Um, so you might be able to use these and incorporate these into your essays. You might not. Um, so for example, if you had an essay about um, the Mongols, um, then you can maybe something that's super relevant um, for um, uh, talking about the Mongols would be a Genghis Khan unified several nomadic tribes in Mongolia and led the Mongol invasion of China in 1234, which was the, which was the beginning of the Mongolian conquest. That might be something that you could put in the contextualization paragraph. Um, it adds context to um, maybe the essay prompts about the rise of the Mongols. You have to explain. You also need to write another sentence explaining how um, that's significant, et cetera. Um, and um, that would work there. Um, but there may be other instances where that doesn't work. Also, these are examples of like little pieces of outside evidence that AP graders look for, but you need an additional sentence um, to um, explain how it's relevant to the argument. So it would be one of these sentences would be an example of outside evidence. 
um, and then an additional sentence explaining um, how it's relevant to the argument. So this is also just to give you an example of what outside evidence could look like. It could be something like a date or event or a description of an ideology. Um, yeah. Or a description of a historical figure. Um, yeah, this is just an example of what contextualization outside evidence looks like. Remember, it looks like this plus an additional sentence. So you need to add that additional sentence. This is the DBQ rubric, which you're going to use for a Wednesday, uh, Wednesday's assignment. Uh, you need to grade my assignment using this rubric. Um, so just tell me what score out of 10 that I get um, and why. Uh, if you need help on this, I'll create a YouTube video. Um, DBQ writing structure. So this is a writing structure just to help you. I highly recommend that you use this writing structure, especially if you're really re in writing or if you have not been um, doing well on these assignments, um, doing well meaning like um, you're not writing at least a page, uh, then you definitely need this writing structure. Uh, so for a causation essay, you're explaining two different things. Um, so this is an example of a causation thesis. Um, oh, so this is an example of um, what I want for contextualization. So for contextualization, you can just insert a key date, um, explain what happened, and then explain why that's significant. And then you can also insert a major ideology, key tenets of that ideology, um, and then um, go ahead and go on and, and explain how that's significant. So that's just to give you an example of contextualization. That's my recommendation. For a thesis, uh, there might be three different types of essays. Uh, essays might actually use more than one historical thinking skill. Your unit six essay use more than one historical thinking skill. Um, so go ahead and uh, review that, review this. Uh, this might help you craft a thesis statement. Thesis statement comes right after contextualization. It can be two sentences, that's what I recommend, or one sentence. Uh, this is a body paragraph pattern that can help you out. Um, on your test. So make sure you take from your thesis part of your thesis and turn it into a topic sentence. I recommend writing a four paragraph essay, um, but you don't have to. Um, so take part of your thesis and place it here uh, and then use this writing structure to help you out. These are some words that can help you stitch together um, your essay. So if you're summarizing, uh, adding, um, linking videos, or I'm sorry, you're summarizing, adding, and linking uh, documents, um, then this is what you would need to use. Summarizing, adding, and linking documents, this is what you need. Um, everyone uh, can be using these transitions, I say. You don't have to use transitions, like writing style is not necessarily graded, or it's not graded, um, but I know sometimes a lot of us care deeply about it in our looking for ways to transition, this might help you out. Uh, if you're writing a cause and effect essay, um, you might want to use some of these, compare and contrast some of these. Um, if you're going for that complexity point, you also want to use a lot of these words in language. So explain counter arguments and explain why they're deficient. Um, so explain alternative interpreta interpretations of the document and explain why yours is the better. That's a good way to get the complexity point. You might want to use a lot of this language and qualifying, meaning making things a little bit more complex. Um, this is your DBQ pre-write organizer. Um, you see examples of this in um, the um, DBQ examples I gave you. I gave you um, model DBQs uh, with a DBQ pre-write organizer filled out. Uh, so this is to help you. I expect you to use it on exam day. Hold on. Um, so uh, you don't have to fill this out completely with your contextualization. You don't have time. Um, so when you print out this golden ticket or you write this golden ticket, I want you to use this um, for your exam, your AP exam. Um, this is to help you brainstorm ideas. Um, you're going to write general ideas about big events in world history that are going on in time or before. It doesn't have to be ex your exact contextualization, but as you're going through the documents, maybe you also want to summarize the documents here. Um, that would also be okay. Summarizing the what are the documents about here. Um, and then also writing your thesis statement here. 
um, elements of your thesis statement, right? It doesn't have to be the exact one you use when you're actually physically writing it. Um, then remember to derive part of your thesis, derive part of your thesis, and then documents that support that topic sentence, documents that support that topic sentence. This becomes body paragraph one, body paragraph two. You don't have to use this format exactly. You can maybe even have a third body paragraph. Uh, those are usually the best essays. Um, and it turns into a, um, a four or five paragraph essay. So an example of this, um, I hope this assages your um, anxieties about this, but an example of this would be, dang it, I don't want that. So this essay is something that you're going to have to grade on Wednesday. Um, I can talk more about that. Okay, we're all here, finally opened. Um, so this is an example of a DBQ pre-write that I did. Um, so I went through the documents and remember at the same time too, you're probably writing notes about the documents either on a separate sheet of paper. I recommend having scratch paper, maybe sticky notes about the documents, um, or maybe you can even write it below your pre-write. Um, so then I kind of have shorthand. This is just a simulation of how I, I write a pre-write. I don't necessarily do this. Um, I circled the historical thinking skill. I just underlined it here. It's comparison and causation. It can be more than one thinking skill. So it makes helps me focus that I'm comparing two things. Um, in this essay prompt, I'm uh, evaluating the similarity between the 16th century uh, European colonization, particularly of the Americas, and um, 19th century European colonization. Um, I write my contextualization. I talk about the age of revolutions um, and the industrial revolution. Uh, ma major events um, that either happened before the 16th century or, or I'm sorry, before um, 19th century colonization, so sandwiched between the 16th and 19th century. Um, and then my thesis, I kind of uh, write sh in shorthand uh, what I think my thesis is going to be about. Um, then I organize my uh, topic sentence and my, uh, my body paragraphs by um, what is going to be my topic sentence. So I'm going to talk about like economic motives for imperialism. So I just write econ here for shorthand, and then I write the documents that support it, convert plus civilized plus the documents that support it. The pre-write is super, 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 super essential. You need to do this, especially if you're very weak in writing to help you plan, or at least some form. Like if you wanna do an alternative pre-write, then do an alternative pre-write, but I need to see a pre-write um, this Friday. Okay. Um, that's all we have to explain, I hope. Um, also, in the model DBQs, you're going to have an assignment next week where you're going to be asked to read the model DBQs and ask, answer guided questions. Um, it's super important that you do that. The model DBQs are stuff that I took a lot of time writing myself, um, explaining the thinking and the logic behind them and posting them on YouTube. And here, uh, you need to be going back and looking at that. Um, if you're not looking at that, then I don't know. Like it sometimes, guys. Um, as the teacher, I feel compelled to work harder than you guys, and I'm not going to ever be that teacher that. Um, um, or I'm sorry, I'm not. 
I, I think as a teacher, I should be working a lot harder than you guys too. But at the same time, you have to try to turn it up. Like I know we're all we're not that far away. A lot of you are not submitting very um, as good of work as you can, and you have the potential to do. Um, I've been a little disappointed in some of your essays. Um, some of your essays I've been very happy to see, and I've been there very happy to see growth in a lot of your essays. And I'm certainly very disappointed in kids that are not submitting essays, but also not explaining why they're not submitting essays or submitting maybe one or two sentences. Um, you know, that's that's not OK. We've been you've shown a lot more um, ability in the classroom and you've done a lot more in the classroom. Um, I know it's very difficult with distance learning. Um, it's new for all of us. It's obviously unprecedented, but please, 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 um, you know, do it for yourself. You don't want to be taking this course in college, especially if you're not interested in history. Um, you don't want to be taking it in college. You can save thousands of dollars um, in, by not taking it in college. And also you get $100 if you pass. So keep that in mind. Um, having said that, I have been um, very, um, you know, hopeful and optimistic um, because I know that when I've uh, been on you about submitting work and when I've given some of you guys feedback, you guys have done a really good job at implementing it. Um, so I've been very happy in that respect.